Hello, this is Kitty for Transgroom TV and let's groom a Bichon today. It is a Bichon with a story though. It's actually 19 years ago I have done a Bichon because in the year 2000 I sold my salon and since then I haven't done a Bichon. So let's see what we can still do and hope for the best. I'm very honoured because I am grooming Maddie and Maddie is owned by Rita Doen and I'm very happy that I can groom this dog. It's been uh, Rita has been a customer from Salon Kitty before I started Transgroom and uh, I thought it was very appropriate to phone Rita and Rita has with pleasure came to give me her dog to be groomed. So I'm very thankful. Thank you Rita for letting me groom your dog. Here you see Maddie. She's a very nice bitch, she's very white, she's very short, uh, she has a fantastic head, not only very beautiful but also a fantastic temperament. Let's do some brushing first. I don't like it when there's uh, some tangles maybe or I don't expect tangles in this dog but uh, I prefer to brush before I start grooming. I always have the opinion when there's tangles and you have to wash and wash again and wash again and then get the water out and rub again with the towels that the, the mats are going to be harder and more into the coat. So I like to brush the dogs before I start grooming. This is the softest brush we have from the Tougher Than Tangles line. It's with the grey pad and the grey pad has the softest pins for the show dogs. Here you see me doing the pads. I don't do very much, I just go in between the pads. I like this part to be short as well because then when the dog runs around he twists his little pads and you see all four pads four black pads and it's very nice with a bichon because it's a nice contrast. I like to do the anus with the style from Heinegger, the mini trimmer, so it's comfortable for the dog and it's also comfortable for when you groom with the scissors around the anus you don't have to worry about the small hairs or take any risk with the points of the scissor to try to get them away. I like to do a little around the eyes, especially if a dog like Maddie has such a beautiful pigment. Like you can see the pigment is very black. You don't have to be afraid to just clip a bit around the eyes and show off that nice black pigmented color of the skin. So the tail I like to do with the style midi trimmer because the smallest trimmer would be too short and the midi trimmer has different uh, lengths so I make it at the longest length and I also go ag against direction of the coat especially because this dog has such a good pigment. Clipping the nails. Maddie has already short nails and Maddie is very used to the way we are clipping the nails now. It's with the electric nail clipper and it's very easy. Uh, the only thing we do is like hold our thumb and then go over the nail. We hold our thumb because then it's easy to not shock the dog or it's we have like a guide. And then it's very easy, we just round off the nails. It's uh, quickly and it's a nice way of doing the nails. If you do it regularly, you never have to cut the nails. You can use this electric nail clipper all the time. So let's do some ear cleaning. I'm using the powder to remove fast and easy the hair, uh, especially around the outside and a little bit on the inside. If I can get everything out, it's fine. Otherwise I will use also the tweezers. I've used the Showtech ear powder here. And I also really like to pluck out around the ears as well, because the more airy the ear is, the more the air can go in between the air, the less you have a chance of having infections. And now I'm using the liquid. If the ear has like wax or dirt deep inside, it, the wax will dissolve. And then with a Q-tip, I will take out 
the liquid and also the grease which is dissolved and the q-tip will normally be brown. Because Maddie's ears are regularly cleaned, as you can see, there's not much dirt or brown or grease coming out, so that's actually excellent. Let's make some shampoo ready now and let's get ready for bathing. So the Pure Coat is a very purifying shampoo. It's a shampoo that is also nicely degreasing. And when you wash, you have a good lather. And it's just a amusing shampoo because it's a shampoo that washes very, very good. I like to use a kind of a sponge because to my idea, it goes quicker than in a mixing bottle. So I put the shampoo in the right quantities in the bowl and then I use the sponge to put the shampoo on the dog and then according to me I have a lather, uh, a quicker lather and I can start washing straight away. And I uh, like to do everything apart from the head and I like to rub with a really firm, I firm, firm, firm so it's not like a light rub because I think the skin is also very dirty and then uh, when everything is washed or when the shampoo gets too dry I like to put some water so my lather is really very very strong and a thick lather and then when I washed everything very well I like to do the head at the last. So after the head, I can rinse straight away the head and I have less chance there's any shampoo stinging in the dog's eye. And then rinsing, the water is lukewarm. It's not too warm, it's not too cold. It's very like body temperature. I like to rinse around the eyes. I don't mind a little bit of water going into the eyes uh, if the pressure is not too high from the shower. I'm very careful not to have any water in the nose. So I go around the nose and then I rinse everything else. And that was the first washing. I'm not afraid of washing three times, but for sure each washing for me is minimum two times. So the second shampoo will be the Showtech Pro Brightening Shampoo and I'm going to use three pumps that's actually two and a half pumps on a bowl and I'm just going to put some warm water in and we're ready. So here you see me the second wash so I'm just uh, making sure the, sh the, the dog is everywhere very well washed with a firm grip I'm massaging, I'm washing and at the last bit I'm going to wash the head, then I'm going to rinse everything very well, starting with the head, then we can do some conditioning. So as you can see, I'm using the Showtech Conditioning Mask. This is a very intensive conditioner and it's very good for Bichons because the Bichons have like a, a thick coat, especially Maddie. Maddie has a fantastic thick coat. And for scissoring and for brushing, this is a very good conditioner because also when you're drying, you will have less time in drying. And like when you are combing, the comb will go through the coat very well without making the coat feel heavy. heavy. I'm using it uh, not very diluted, one to one, because I really wanted to have a rich conditioner and leave it on for five to 10 minutes. I'm just taking a little bit more conditioner and then with my hands rubbing it on the coat. So I also like to rest the conditioner like uh, a few minutes uh, minimum five if you can leave it on ten and this will make that the skin and the coat and the the conditioner is absorbed well after uh, minimum five minutes you can start rinsing and it's also very important that you rinse everything out uh, especially when you are scissoring when you go over the coat together with water and you have like this squeaky feeling then it means that all the conditioner is out when it's for scissoring or going to shows don't leave any conditioning in rinse everything out that's the best way so here I'm using the blaster and as you can see I'm also using a towel and most of the water will fly away because the blaster is like very strong and when the water flies away 
from one leg it goes to the other leg but to stop this it's easier when you use a towel so when all the water most or most of the water flies away some water will be absorbed by the towel so you will win some time if you do this together with a towel so here I'm with the blaster I'm like doing the most of the water uh, so most of the water is out I'm not going to go very close to the head and the ears and then we can do the head and the ears with the towel on the table. When most water is disappeared, I'm gonna do the rest at the table. I do this because when you have a fully wet dog and you put it on the table and you use the blaster, the water flies everywhere and then around your table it will be very wet. To see if the dog is ready to be brushed with the dryer, I like to rub my hand over the coat and if I hold it up to the light and it's shiny with water, it means that the dog is not well done with the towel. So I continue toweling with the warm air until when I rub the coat and I look up and my, head is, my hand is not shiny with water, then it means I can start brushing with the warm air where the dryer opens the coat we brush with a fine brush and we pull out all the curls and this is only possible by doing it if the hair is still damp and you have a good uh, slicker brush and you have the warm air with this combination with the slicker the warm air and the brushing you can create a very nice a non fuzzy coat so you take out all the curls so the hair is straight so it's also important you stay at this one place until the hair is totally dry because let's say you have brushed and the hair is straight and you go to another place but because the hair is still a little bit damp when you go to the other place the hair will just shrink in each other because it's natural curly and it will start curling again and especially when you have to scissor you have to make sure that the coat is as straight as possible so sometimes it's challenging because with the head of the dryer uh, you need to like be able to turn the dryer head around because where you see the star where the coat is opening you need to have that all over the dog not only on top but you know like the head you need to have here and here and here and you need to like turn around the dryer head and the dog and sometimes it's a challenge to get the right position with the dryer it's also quite important that the dryer is quite close to the coat I may I, I think about this you know maybe it's 15 centimeters so this gives you the best way because then the dryer is full on the coat and um, if the dryer is for example too far you will lose too much time. Here you see me using the Ultra Pro side slicker from Showtech. This is a new slicker, it has very long uh, pins and they're very soft in use. I like to turn the dog around towards me to do the top line, it's comfortable for the dog and it's good because you can see everything and you can turn them a little left and a little right to do everything. Maddie has been taught since she was a puppy for lying down, for grooming and brushing and combing. So this is a very big advantage because now she can just lie down and relax while we do the legs and the tummy and the shoulders and Maddie's been brought up very well. I like to divide the legs in four parts. I like to do like with my dryer first the uh, side uh, and then the two the backwards and the front and then the inside and I make it like I do the full side first from up to down and I get my dryer everywhere so I can see a very well a nice line and then um, when I do the back I do the same thing the back of the leg and then the front of the leg and then I'm sure everything is done and now actually I'm finishing the top line where I st where I stopped uh, before and as you can see I like to have the dryer from the back to the front and comb everything upwards towards the top line
And here you can see me finishing the back of the leg. And actually, when you just start and you have the dryer on the coat, it's like zigzag. And when you're nearly finished and you do the same thing with the dryer on the back of the leg, you will see like a line. And that means that all the curls are gone and that it's finished. Here as well on the line, you see a very nice line and no more zigzags. You see me using a spray and that's because um, the hair is too dry. So when the hair is too dry, I'm afraid I won't get all the curls out. It's better to use water than to have curls afterwards. So I've used a little bit of water to make the coat wet again so I can have a nice finish in my drying. As you can see when I use a brush, I don't use the brush like I'm not twisting the brush up, I'm using it and I'm going flat. It's not very good when you comb, if, when you do that with your brush. First of all, it's not very good for your wrist when you do that all the time with your brush. And it's also not very good for the points of the brush and for the coat and for the skin. Because every time you do that, you like push the front rows of the pins inside the the, the skin and you might hurt the dog. Maddie has a fantastic temperament. Here you see if you train your dogs from off puppy to stand on a table, to get used to the brush, to used to lying down while brushing if you have a long haired brush. Here you can see the advantage because now Maddie is a very nice behaved dog and it's amusing actually for both of us. She lets us groom while she's lying down and while she's lying down she can just relax. Look how much hair came out of the coat. It has many reasons but first of all it's to show you that this dog has, is well maintained, it's brushed regularly, it's washed every week and the coat is not damaged at all. For example, if you would have a matted dog and if you would brush it and comb it through, you would have 10 much as hair at, that came out of the brush because of the mats and the not well maintaining. So it's just a point I'm making that if you want to have a perfectly coat, uh, you need to really maintain it and then you don't have to hurt the coat or damage the coat or, or break the coat. and you know, you can wash and dry a dog and only a minimum of hair comes out of the coat. Let's do some scissoring. So first of all, I'm going to make sure that all the coat is layer layered nicely. So I'm going to do some brushing and some combing to make sure all the coat is like straight forward and nicely fluffed up. And then we can start with the scissors. For me, the most difficult part is like the front part to balance everything out, to see how long the dog is. So this is exactly where I start. In the meantime, the front part is done and then the most work is done and then it's easier to do all the rest. You will see me starting at the front feet. The front of the feet, I will do the shortest. At the nails, uh, it's gonna go really very short. And then I'm gonna do the roundings I'm working on the front of the leg because that's, for me, one of the most important lines. So I'm going to take a lot of time doing this. But for me, this line from on the nails to the front of the shoulder, the chest, uh, the straight line has to be really short. So the front of the foot is short and then everything goes towards the back. And if you do that, you're already shortening the dog and it, it's like an optical uh, it looked op optical, it looks shorter, and that's the good thing to do. Once you have your line, then you can go and find where the dog starts, and his neck and his shoulder. You don't have to go too short there, but it has to be like, you see where the dog starts in the neck, and then you have to like round the chest. Here, you see me like twisting myself around the chest, that's because I look always a certain way, I look at the outside of the dog and I stand in a certain position to see the rounding of the chest. And I'm constantly using my comb and combing the hair. Here as well you can see the front, the front of the, the leg nicely straight and you could see the curve of the chest. The combing is actually just as important as the scissoring. 
So keep on combing deep inside and make sure all the hair is straight before you scissor. And then scissor and repeat. And that way you will get a fantastic finish. And you can only get this fantastic finish when you did your prep work, that means you're washing, you're conditioning and you're drying, you're taking out all the curls. If that's correctly done, this is the only way you can have a fantastic finish. So here I'm looking from the side and you can nicely see the curved chest. Here you see me using the Utsumi 20 cm straight, uh, the Yo uh, scissor. And um, this is a very sharp, light scissor, and I like this. I like to use this small scissor very much for like the, the finishing. I'm actually taking the feet in my hands uh, to comb, but uh, I don't know if you noticed, but while I'm scissoring the feet, I leave the feet on the floor. If you leave the dog standing upwards in a natural position, it's easier to scissor straight legs. If you lift the legs you don't actually see what you're doing and you have the possibility of having curved legs or having bent legs. Here I'm using a wider scissor for making more cutting more hair at the time not for the finishing like for modeling and for cutting, cutting deep into the coat. This is the Utsumi Yo King straight scissor and it's uh, 21 centimeters. I like to lift the two front legs for doing the underneath of the tummy and the chest. I'm just following the line of the dog so I'm not really like styling, I'm just following the not natural line of the dog. I like to use an extra long scissor for going in between the front legs and at the back of the front legs and this is the Utsumi 23 centimeter long slim scissor. As you can see, I'm spending a real long time for finishing the front because once this is done, it's uh, done and it's correct. And But I don't mind spending a lot of time in the front because it's really very important. It's very important the front legs of a Bichon are not conical. It's a cylinder and it's from top to bottom a straight line. So a nice thick round cylinder. It's also very important at the bottom where the feet are it doesn't go in too much it has to be right really straight. To finish the front and to finish the shoulders for me it's important to see how long the dog is so I'm just starting to make a point where the tail is and where the bottom is so I'm like in, in 40 degrees, like making a round, nice uh, bottom, bum. And uh, this is gonna make me see the length of the dog. And I'm gonna also do uh, a part of his back. So then uh, I can hold him where he starts and where he starts at the shoulder and at his bottom. And then I can finish the shoulders and the front. Without knowing how exactly how long the dog is, it's very difficult for me to finish the front. To finish the shoulders, I have to do a part of his top line. So after I have a part of the top line, you can see I'm doing the sides now. And the sides are really like straight to start with. Also the top line I'm making as well quite straight. And then later I'm gonna make it more round. But I start with making the top line quite flat, not straight, flat. And here you see me lifting the back legs. Um, this is a nice system to make it equally. Uh, of course the dog has to let you, the dog has to be used to it. And if you do this with young dogs, they will get used to it very easy. Here I'm making the start of doing the head. Because also to finish the shoulders and the top line, I just want to have a bit of line, you know, like creating a bit of a nice top line with the, the head in it. So uh, I have to do the head a bit. So I've made with the thinning scissors around the eyes, shorter. Um, you can do this, it's, it's very important, uh, Bichon, when you finish the head that it's like a cover up, but when you 
see under the cap, under the head, you see the nice black round eyes. And uh, if the dog has a very good um, uh, pigment, it's very interesting to go round the eyes a little short. So you see the nice black pigment from the eyes. And then I like to use a curved scissor <laughs> around the eyes and then you can nicely round off here and round off that area. And you see me in my hand, I'm holding my hand behind the ears. When you push the, the ears a little bit to the front, you have a nice round finish and the ear will be within the head, it won't spring out. The Bichon head, wherever you look, if it's from the top, from the side or from the front, you should see a round, nice head. So now you see a nice back and you see where the top line starts. And it's not going up st st steady, it's like a horizontal back and then you have the top line. Also here you see nicely the tummy. The tummy is like going up halfway and from halfway then going horizontal. Now you see me doing the back legs. For me, I like to lift the back legs and when you have the back leg, like uh, if this is the, the feet, like I, on the hock, everything that comes past the pads, I cut off. And then the front of the back leg, also where the nails are, in front of the nails, I cut everything nice off. With the Bichon, you have to be very careful you don't do a poodle bum. So what I want to tell you, it's like it's a straight bum here, it's actually <laughs> straight here and it has two st straight sides and then when you start going rounding you have to be careful you don't make it too round. So flat, flat, flat and flat. Don't make it too round so you have a big bum, a big fat bum. <laughs> As well, the back legs, it's like a cylinder. Of course, there's mini combing involved and scissoring and repeating, combing, scissoring, combing, scissoring. It's very important if you see it from different angles that you see the angulations very well. The Bichon Hock is not too high. It's lower than it is with the poodles. So here you see me going in very much. I'm even lifting it's the back leg to have where it folds to have a good cut and from there I'm gonna create the angulation to the front or the top and the bottom. The front part of the back leg is just going in one straight line down. Be careful where the tuck up is, you don't go short there. If you would cut this hair off you would have like this. So this part would be very long. So we leave this hair here and you have the creation that it's a short body. And here you see very nicely the, the back of the dog is very horizontal. At the top line you see uh, like a hole because uh, there's puppies in the house and they have been playing and the top line has a little hole in it. So here you see a finished Maddie. Uh, for 20 years ago that I've done a Bichon, um, it's okay, but of course uh, the next Bichon I do, uh, it should be a bit lighter, a bit finer, because I think Maddie is still a bit too heavy. So I'm sorry I can't do Maddie a second time, I would have improved this, that and there, but um, it's the way it is. So here you can see some before and after pictures of Maddie. I was very fortunate because I went to the European dog show and ran into Regina Bellstad and she asked me to finish her Bichon and I was very happy with my work there. Here you see some uh, little small video and here you see the work I did on her dogs. She was uh, competing with a veteran from nine years old which was a beautiful dog and with a three year and a half male and the three year and a half male had best of breed. So I was very happy and now I'm all up to date with the Bichon style again.
So this was our Bichon video from Maddie. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to, to subscribe. And see you next time at Transgroom TV. Bye.